Ich klage nach Vashti. Ich gehe. Ich stelle. Lashing. Spitten. A flood. Waves. Where we are now is we're out in the boat and we're looking at Cove from the water, which is the best way to see our beautiful town. It's the second largest natural harbour in the world and, you know, it's a massive commodity to the, to the local community. So when these big storms come in, the rainwater runoff is, is a huge factor. It all makes its way to the sea at the end of the day. So we're now approaching East Beach where there's a pilot scheme for a rain garden whereby we're going to deal with the water that comes, you know, from rain or dirty water that's now going to be filtered and cleaned before it goes back into our harbour. We are the first in the country to showcase those nature-based solutions and what we have done in East Beach is actually a very interesting science project to demonstrate uh, how the rain garden works where we are collecting the water runoff from the road, which is dirty. Then the water goes into the planters. We have different soils and different um, type of planting. And then we are monitoring how the quality of the water is um, improved after this filtration. But what excites me about this project is it's, it's the start of something that we should have done a long time ago, which is take, take our water seriously. Ireland has a lot of problems with, with water quality, uh, both urban and rural. So what we want to do as, as of the university is to really put some data to it, some quantitative data to it, in terms of the water chemistry, the water hydrology. So we make this a scientific reality, not just something that should be good or looks good, but actually functions properly. The old adage of great men plant trees that they won't play in the shade. We're hoping we can demonstrate for future generations that what we do now will provide a more sustainable environment for people in the future. So from a, a climate resilience aspect, if we can reduce the amount of rainwater running off from storm events, we should see less hydrocarbons, less PAHs, less nutrients and less other heavy metals from traffic, such as uh, cadmium mercury from brake pad and tyre wear. So if we look at Cove here on the map, what's really interesting about Cove is it's extremely hilly. Um, sometimes like at night it floods when it's heavy rain and like it like runs down the hill near Sorrento's. Um, would anybody even have ever heard of a rain garden? Um, is it a rainforest in the shape of a garden? Uh, a garden that tries to soak up as much rain as possible. That's brilliant. So you've kind of, you've kind of, without really knowing exactly what a rain garden is, you guys are piecing it all together. You're helping each other work it out, which is brilliant. It's and crucial to have community on board for every public realm or urban regeneration project. In particular, children are strategic because they're going to be the adult of tomorrow. And they are the people that are the next generation can help the planet to come up with a bigger agenda of um, greening and um, making resilient towns. I think uh, if Cove becomes more greener, I think more people start visiting and to make uh, Cove look prettier and uh, look more like people care about the town. I think that nature itself is just so important and I think we need to look after it more. Um, and I think we should try to stop pollution as much as possible and we need to look after like plants and animals. It would just be nice to see way more green and stuff because you kind of need it in your life. Biodiversity is unfortunately uh, undergoing major declines throughout the world. Increased urbanisation, agricultural intensification have all contributed to huge losses in insect uh, plant, uh, bird populations right around the country. The, the rain garden here will present an ideal opportunity to harness the powers of nature, to clean our dirty water if you like, and to provide an attractive habitat for insects. It's beautiful, <laughs> it's lovely. <laughs>
planting for us at, at the forefront of our minds when we're planting um, is planting with a purpose and for a long time the planting that we have undertaken has been pollinator friendly planting and it has been so important for us to plant plants that interest and are beneficial to the insects uh, among us. So this it's a vinca right it's periwinkle is the common name for it and it looks quite innocuous but you see a little flower on it there but if you see that plant in January it'll be lots more flowers on it and I've seen bumblebee queens on this plant in January, which is, you know, it's doing them a world of good at that particular time of the year. It will do fine in East Beach. And you know, because it's close to the sea, we've chosen plants that are, you know, going to work near the sea as well. But you can look, like there's plenty of color, there's plenty of interest, but nearly everything has a value for pollinators at some time of the year. Bringing forward these types of techniques where we're actually bringing planting and soft landscape, the opportunity for biodiversity and amenity into these spaces I think is a real complement and should showcase and enhance the already existing high quality calibre of this town. It would be really fascinating to see the results of this demonstration rain garden in East Beach. I think Cove has suffered I think for the longest time from being quite an industrial scape from a lack of greenery and we have a plan ourselves to develop this in the next six months to bring more plant life to where we are. If we get public transport up to decent levels and so on, you know, we can get more and more green spaces in our towns and then you get into this fantastic circle of regenerating your towns by not having to concrete over them. We went downtown to look at the rain gardens and like we got to spray paint on them like and we got to pick our colours and our stencils and Minister Noonan is here. Um, I guess they're really like bright and you can see them from when the ships go past in the water, it'll be really nice. I've been very impressed with the, with the project that we saw here this morning. I love that co-design cool element of it. Uh, I love the fact that the school children are involved, I love the fact that the tidy towns are involved. I think that's critically important. We can't uh, arrive at these solutions uh, imposed top-down from either government policy or through local authorities. It has to be done in a collaborative way and I think uh, the learning experience we have from this is replicable in other urban centres. The rain garden boosts biodiversity because of the plants from the rain garden attract lots of birds, bees, bees. and butterflies. Sorry. It's amazing and it's brilliant that we're going to have rain gardens in Cove. I suppose we're all grappling with the fact that we're in a biodiversity crisis, we're in an environmental crisis with respect to climate change. But if we can introduce schemes like this to demonstrate the promise of something, I think that will generate the momentum that hopefully in time will bring us to that stage where we are that ecological society. And I mean, not only can we take this into the public realm, but maybe people can look at it and say, my garden, you know, I could do something similar to this. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's all about lighting the fire, if you like. You know, it terrifies me when I think about my grandchildren. But we do have a choice about the life we live and how we influence our children. And now I see my little grandchildren and they're coming out and we're identifying flowers and we learn what lives in them in order for it to survive. And so that kind of learned knowledge is gently passed on to your grandchildren. And I think they're the future. We have to give them the future by educating them and informing them. Mm -hmm.